Hello and welcome to Wall Street Trainings module on Finance 101. My name is Hamilton Lin and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions, having worked at Goldman Sachs in investment banking, as well as Bank of America Securities in the mergers and acquisitions group, as well as two other boutique investment banks, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. I am a CFA charter holder as well and the president and founder of Wall Street Training. In the next a little segment, we will go through an explanation of the basic financial concepts that one must absolutely master, what we call the Finance 101, Introduction to Finance Topics, that one must absolutely know in order to be able to understand the concepts in the basic financial modeling, valuation, how to analyze, and rip apart companies. With that in mind, let's turn to our slides at this point. As we had already talked about, folks, the cost of equity has already been determined via CAPM and the security market line. The question now becomes, how should we determine the cost of debt? There are three options you have. You have the coupon rate, the current yield to maturity as observed in the market, or your incremental marginal borrowing rate. So let's turn back to our slide. Here what we'll say is the following. Currently, the assumption is that the company has one tranche of debt outstanding. The coupon rate is 10%. That's the actual cash pay. And the yield to maturity as determined by the market is 11%. XYZ firm is told by its investment bankers that any debt that they issue must now be only issued, can only be issued at 12% due to the additional risk. So when we look at it from that perspective there, what is the current cost, what is the correct cost of debt to use for purpose of this WAC calculation? You have three options. Coupon of 10, yield to maturity of 11, and the new issue at 12%. So what is the correct number to use? Here are your different options and the arguments. It is possible that the cash is the correct cost of debt to use for a WAC calculation. Why is that? Simply because WAC, this is going to be the actual amount. This is actual observable. More importantly, cash is king. What we care about is the fact that this is what we are actually paying. Now, the yield to maturity and argument for why we would use the yield to maturity of 11% is simply this is what the market has said. The market has spoken, and this is currently the amount that the investors demand that your debt returns. New issues are going to be at 12%. The argument for that is simply that this is the incremental marginal cost of issuing new debt. And therefore, which one of these are going to be the correct one to use for your cost of debt in your WAC calculation? Let me repeat each one of these options. Cash is king. You can't argue the fact that this is exactly how much I currently pay. Therefore, why use any other number? Because cash is the amount that I will use. However, on the flip side, the market responded and said, interest rates have moved since you issued this particular tranche or this later debt. Since the market now has spoken and said, by the way, 11% is what we now, is what we now require, that should be your cost of debt. Finally, what we're trying to say is, well, hey, the incremental marginal borrowing rate, if I were to issue brand new debt for my company, I can't even issue it at the 11% market. I must issue at 12%, and therefore, which one of these three answers is going to be the correct cost of debt to use? Well, let's think about it this way. If you think about this from a purely conceptual theoretical perspective, you should actually use the incremental margin cost. That would be the correct number. So that means that this is the correct amount to use. However, the reality of the situation says this is impossible to know. This is not observable until you actually issue it. So when I'm trying to calculate it now, before I've issued it, I don't really know what this is. The yield to maturity, however, is also a good substitute for that. This is a proxy for the marginal cost of debt. Why do we only care about marginal incremental? Well, if I were to take on a new project, I would have to issue new debt to fund that project. Therefore, anything that passes is irrelevant. So therefore, since I cannot actually observe this new issue rate, I will use the yield to maturity as a proxy for this marginal cost of debt. Well, the reality of the situation also says as follows. It is sometimes easier to just use the coupon. This assumes for a regular, non-distressed, going concern company, we sometimes get lazy and just use the coupon straight out of the book, straight out of the 10K filing, what's the actual coupon rate. However, keeping in mind, that if you are to do this correctly, you should be using the weighted average of the yield to maturity for all your debt tranches. We do sometimes use the coupon rate just for simplicity because it's going to be very similar if the interest rates have not significantly moved or this is a non-distressed going concern company. 